Hi everyone, my name is Preeti Raheja and I am the assistant principal here as well as your academic advisor for 9th and 10th graders. Today, uh, we, Ms. Millar and I, were going to focus on our career path and explain the various college options you have after completing high school. First, in order to ensure we get you into the college, the work begins here at the high school. Our number one goal is to make sure that when you first enter high school, you are enrolled into our A through G courses. So what is A through G courses? This is a curriculum which high school courses are designed to ensure students have attained core subject knowledge that will fully and effectively prepare our students for college. These are the sequences of courses in seven subject areas that the students must complete with a grade C or better and be eligible to be, have the admission to a CSU or USC system. As our ninth and 10th graders enroll on our campus, I always recommend our students to take the path of A through G courses, even if they state during the interview that they have no intentions to go to college. By placing those students into these courses helps students make, make better decisions as to what they want to do after high school. Often students change their mind into saying they would like to enroll into colleges. Therefore, these classes prepare them into getting into a four-year path. As we all know, it is four-year plan after high school. It's dedication and time and approximately four years after high school to complete a four-year college. A four-year college program is an undergraduate degree program that leads to a bachelor's degree in a specific area of study. This degree prepares students for a desired profession, graduate study, or both. College beyond, keep doors open. One too many times we have plans to attend specific four-year four colleges. As you reach your junior and senior years, keep your doors open. Visit as many colleges and universities as possible that offer degrees in your specific areas of study. You will be very surprised how many schools will offer financial support if you take the opportunity to be part of their school. So what happens to those of us that have no intention to attend a four-year college? For those students, we do have a CTE program, but there, and that is our career technical education which is a practice of teaching specific career skills to high schoolers. CTE makes learning relevant and important and spe specializes in a specific career field. One of the main goals for CTE is to put individual students to work to achieve success defined in several ways, including earnings and quality of life. Lastly, workforce or manpower. Students who decide to join workforce after high school can join an organized group and work for them for a specific period. Depending on the need of the company will determine what kind of job a student qualifies for. I hope this information is informative. Remember, I'm here to support all the students and I will ensure that I put you on track for our A through G requirements. I will now hand it over to Mr. Oliver, who will share with you about the process and the importance of creating a 10-year plan that you have been working on in our fresh, freshman requirement class. Um, hello, my name is Derek Oliver and I teach freshman requirements here at the at Bret Hart High School and Mrs. Millar and Ms. Rahija had invited me to speak a little bit about the 10-year plan. Uh, the 10-year plan is a, a major component of freshman requirements. Uh, we spend a good chunk of our year uh, making this plan for students to uh, think about their post-secondary and their college and their career training that they would like to have. Um, the 10-year plan is, it's, it's why 10 years people often ask me, why do we do this plan for 10 years instead of four or six years? Uh, it takes a student from the age of 14 all the way through 24 and culminates with them entering the workforce. Uh, there's too much change happening right now. College is very expensive. Um, it's, hard to, it's hard to go spend $25,000, $30,000 a year to send a kid to college with them not knowing 
what they want to do. And so just by beginning this process the freshman year, it allows students time to, to learn how to make these decisions. It allows students time to change their mind as they get there. And, um, and it just gives them some focus and drive at high school. Um, what the 10 year plan really does is it coaches students to answer the crucial question, why do I need a good education? Um, if they really want the, they have many aspirational and lofty dreams, and to achieve these things, they're going to need an education to get there. Um, some of the goals in having the 10-year plan start their freshman year is to make gradu graduation, high school graduation a reality and a priority for these students. It helps them focus on what they need to do to get where they want to be in their future. How do we do that? Well, we spend a lot of time first breaking down what students want and who they are, their desires, their hopes, their dreams. Uh, we look at their strengths, their skills, their abilities. Um, we look at their future lifestyle that they want to have. Do they want to be married? Do they want to have kids? Do they want to own a house or a car? And then we begin the process of making a, a, a lifestyle goal and then how much this will cost them in the future and what it will, we go and look at what it would budget. We go and budget what it would cost for them to have this lifestyle. Once we have the lifestyle and the budget in place, then we begin to do some career research and see what kind of careers, what kind of jobs would pay for this kind of a lifestyle. Uh, and that begins to lead them down the path to what they might like to do. I want to make it clear that I, I speak with students all the time about I'm 14, I'm 15, I, I can't think that far into the future and I understand that completely. The 10-year plan is not to make a career choice. The 10-year plan is to teach them the skills to navigate this world, teach them the skills they need to get through high school, to get into a vocational school or a two-year college or a four-year school and pursue their goals. It is not to make a decision right now at 14 that they have to stick to. Um, we spend half the school year doing this and by the end of the first semester we have a 10-year plan in place to be used for counseling purposes, to be used for um, course registration for the sophomore year. Um, the great thing about the 10-year plan, this is our second year doing it. The 10th graders this year who completed one last year are now updating their 10-year plans. They're revisiting their plans to see how they've changed, how their goals or their career choices have changed. They're also doing more research on high-demand careers, and they're also doing research on how to afford a college education. The 11th grade module, which we'll institute next year, uh, we're going to research STEM careers, research and explore major and minor studies at college, and we're going to begin to write the important documents like resumes, college essays, and timelines. And then finally for their senior year, we're going to finalize their post-secondary college plan or vocational plan. And we're going to finalize their job resume, college job applications, and we're going to begin writing admission essays and financial aid forms. All of these things are in place to help our students succeed and achieve their goals and their dreams. Um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Can I answer some questions? Mrs. Millar. Yes, so what it sounded like you were saying is this plan is for all students, not just students that want to go to college? For all students, yes. I mean, military, vocational schools, community colleges, four-year schools, private schools. We look at everything and all the options. We explore all the options. The, the, ba the best part about this is all the plans are unique to each individual student. I'm not picking things for them. They're picking their goals, their hopes, their dreams, and then we're just trying to find a pathway to it. That sounds like a great option. I'm uh, really excited to see this because in my position, before I was getting students that hadn't looked at any of these things, and I've already started to see it last year with freshmen that came in and knew things that many seniors didn't know yet. So I just want to say this is a great opportunity for well, students. I believe so too. I, I really hope so. I, I, and it's like I said, it's hard to get a 14 year old to understand the impact of this right now. But I think as they become juniors and seniors and begin to look at all the work they've done and all the research that they've done towards their career, that um, they're going to find their senior year much more easy to navigate. And uh, as they work on out of Bret Hart onto whatever their dreams are, they're going to have some ideas of how to achieve that, how to get there. So that's pretty much it. Do you have any questions for me? I know. I think you pretty much uh, answered all the questions or any concerns we had. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now I would like to introduce Ms. Millar, our career and 
college counselor and she will have more details for you regarding how we can get into colleges and set a career path. Well, welcome Ms. Miller. I'm so glad you were able to join us today. And I do have some questions that, you know, I would like for you to answer for uh, all of us. And um, if there is anything else we have, you're more than welcome to ask me as well. So um, everyone, this is Mrs. Miller. Good evening. It's so nice to be here with your ninth and 10th grade grade administrator. What my job is, is to help students that are looking for college pathways, career pathways, military pathways, uh, volunteer pathways, gap year pathways. There's so many different options and so I try to alert students to opportunities and one of the best ways for me to do that is for students to, especially by their junior year, be having contact with the Career Center counselor so that they know um, about that student and what the student's looking for. And I've posted so much information for all of our students on the Career Center webpage. I tell our students, you should be uh, hopping on that website at least uh, once a week to see if there's anything that might pertain to you because it's so varied. There's not just one group of information up there. Awesome, well, thank you. Um, so Ms. Miller, tell us uh, a little bit about the grades. Are grades really important for our students to get into colleges? Absolutely, grades are important. And you touched on it a little bit in the introduction where you talked about uh, the necessity to have C or above grades. And that's because most institutions will not recognize that you took a class if the grade is below a C. So that's why um, if you're really struggling with the class, go to that teacher, get some help. Can you get a, a peer tutor? What are your options to keep those grades up? So they do become important. And I think it's also important to realize that every type of college system has different um, GPA calculations and some it's 9th through 11th grade, some it's 10th and 11th grade only and so to be best prepared make sure you have C's or above in all of your classes. Thank you, thank you, that's very informative. Um, so how do I explore the colleges, um, you know, that's, that I feel is right for me? That's a great question because what you want to do is use one of the college um, uh, exploration websites and there's many of them out there but what I've done on the Career Center webpage is put the ones that I think are most relevant or some of the best ones where they're not trying to sell you information so to speak and so just within California if you look at the UC website you can explore all the UC um, colleges if you look at the Cal State website you can apply you can uh, look at all of the colleges there and with the pandemic what's really changed is most of these colleges now have virtual uh, campus visits where you can see the campus they take you around and show it to you virtually so you can go look at a school in Florida and then I think the other way that's very, very important, and we have a lot of these posted on the website, are actual virtual college fairs. And I know uh, there's a bunch coming up this spring that are specifically geared towards underclassmen so that you can start to see what's out there. Awesome, awesome. So I know they have to have certain grades to get into that, and you know we're looking at our choice of um, universities and colleges out there. Um, but what are some requirements to get into a college? Okay, besides grades, there, and again, it depends on this college system, some are going to require you to have specific courses, which is where if you are A through G certified, probably 95% of the colleges in the United States, you will be uh, prepped academically to uh, submit there. The other thing is some colleges are still requiring SATs and ACTs, and it varies. We know the UC is not. We know that the Cal State um, has not announced what they're gonna do for next year. We know that junior colleges do not require them. 
But then as far as private colleges and out-of-state colleges, it varies. So the best advice that I'm currently giving our juniors is to take the SAT in case you need it, because we don't know. We also uh, know that uh, the SAT can be used for merit scholarship, so that becomes important, as well as the PSAT for the National Merit Scholarship programs. So it varies. I can't even give you just one thing, but I also will tell you that what I'm hearing from admissions reps on a daily basis is because many schools now are going test optional or getting rid of the SAT and ACT, it becomes even that more important to have good grades because that's going to be probably the first thing they look at. And then the other thing that they're looking at is that they want to see you doing something outside of your classwork. And that something could be you could have a job because you're helping to pay family expenses. It could be that you're volunteering at a community center. It could be that you're a peer tutor. It could be anything. They don't want to see you sitting around and having no activity outside of um, your actual classes. They don't need to see 20. They would rather see you be passionate about something and out exploring that one or two things. Wow, amazing. Thanks for sharing that. Um, so we all often hear, you know, students mention about the cost of going to a college. And I think that is some sort of fear that a lot of us always have. So could you explain to us what are some options we do have? Say, for instance, if I'm not able to afford to go to a college that I really had in my mind I wanted to attend because it has you know, um, the field that I'm trying to get into. What are some options that are out there for me? Well, I always say the option that every student has at Bret Hart is to attend Columbia College. And our freshmen and sophomores may not be aware of this, but we really drill it with the juniors and seniors, is um, Columbia College has the Promise Grant. And that is guaranteed to any student that starts Columbia College in the fall after they graduate, as long as they submit a FAFSA, which is a uh, federal financial aid form. So that is an option. There's 115 approximately uh, community colleges in California, and many of them also now have two-year programs. So if you were going into a special career, something really unique, and I'll say mortician, because there's only two junior colleges in the state of California that have it, you might be able to still go to that school for that particular trade for very low cost if they participate in that two-year program through the state. Amazing, amazing. And the fact that you brought up Columbia College, uh, you know, we do get a lot of students that come in and, you know, question about can they do dual enrollment? And these are our ninth graders, 10th graders. So what are the opportunities and how does one enroll for dual enrollment via you know, community college as well as getting credits here in high school? Well, the first thing is to set up an appointment with their grade level advisor or myself uh, to talk about their desire to take community college classes. And after we have those meetings, um, the grade level administrator and myself will communicate if we feel like this student has um, the true motivation to take classes at a community college. And then if they do, they have to go through the dual enrollment process. And that dual enrollment process requires some paperwork. It requires signatures by an administrator here at the high school. And then it will require them to create uh, accounts, and that's where I can come in and help. I can actually uh, walk them through the steps and actually help them create their um, application for admission and get them started. So the help is here if the student really wants to do it. And they can do dual enrollment, not only at Columbia, but any community college that does dual enrollment in California. So we've had students going to school here taking classes down in um, Orange County uh, because that's where they could find the class that they wanted to take. So as long as that school will um, does have the dual enrollment program, you can. I will m mention that a student must be 14 years old um, to be a participant in that program. And that's a state policy, not a, a specific college policy. 
Awesome. Well, good to know that too, you know, that a student must be 14 years old at least to um, enroll into a dual enrollment program. Um, just kind of tying into that, if a student does decide to do that, um, does Columbia College pay for the tuition as well? Uh, yes. While you're a high school student, you can take college classes for free through the dual enrollment program. There are some minor fees. Um, the biggest one that I tell students is that you're going to have to buy a book. And then there is a, um, another fee. And this spring, they actually um, took that fee away because of the pandemic. So they didn't charge the students that fee this uh, spring. But normally, it's about $36 plus the cost of your book. But what I tell parents and students, that's saving you a lot of money. We both know how expensive college is. And so you could take a three unit class for maybe uh, with your fees and books, say around $80, where a three unit class at a college is going to cost you $1,000 and up. Uh, so it's a huge savings, just a huge savings. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so what if a student comes up and says, you know, I definitely do not see myself going to any college. I really do not have any plans for a four year college. What are some options for those students? Okay. There's a lot of great options. There are apprenticeship programs, which are generally in the trades areas. And that's where they're in a specific program where they're studying a trade and then they're out working in the trade and then they're back in the classroom. And oftentimes these programs uh, still take a long time to complete, anywhere from two to five years. But when they come out, then they are uh, certified in the specific trade that they went to. We also have students that will enlist in the military and try to get some training through the military or uh, get military benefits to help pay for college at a later date. And then we also have students that will um, in, uh, enlist in the National Guards. And that's kind of the best of both worlds. That's where they train one weekend a month, but then they can be working or going to junior college or even a four-year college. And they also are accruing benefits to help pay for college. And there's some great programs out there through the military for students that want to look that direction. And then, of course, our last option is to try to assist students that are looking for work. They say, no, I'm just going into the workforce immediately. So there are so many options. Awesome, awesome. Well, at least we have, you know, um, a college career path for the students as well as other options for students that do not have, you know, any interest in colleges. Um, so as a student, if I needed any additional support or have questions regarding colleges or future um, plans, who would I consult? Well, I think our students at Bret Hart are very lucky <clears throat> because we work as a team. We have Mr. Oliver working with them as freshmen and sophomores uh, in their, their 10 year plan. We have their grade level administrator working with them so that they're meeting their graduation requirements and trying to uh, line them up if they want to go on to college afterwards. And then if they want to do something specific to applying to college or looking at other options, we have a career center right here on campus for our students and they can uh, use the resources here at any time. Awesome, awesome. All right, well, at this time, Ms. Millard, do you have any questions for me? I know we actually work together, you know, um, as stated earlier, I am the advisor for our ninth and 10th graders, you know, setting them onto a A through G courses. So they're getting ready to be on that path for our CSU UC system. And I work alongside with you when I have students that come in for any concerns regarding what career paths they would like to choose. Um, at this point, do you have any other questions that you would like to ask me? Well, if I was a student that um, even after going through the 10 year plan and trying to find some careers and I really am confused about what to do, who would be the best person probably for me to talk to um, if I was totally confused with the whole process? 
I think once again, utilizing our career center, you know, uh, reaching out to Ms. Miller, our counselor, you know, um, you know, obviously you would be the one who would have all their resources. Students can come in, um, speak with you, make an appointment, you know, and just kind of browse through the options. And even when students come to me in my office with those concerns, I usually look at some of their electives, some of their courses that they have taken, what their grades looked like. And I usually question them in regard to those areas of those courses, what interested them the most about it? Do they see themselves going into something of that such a um, field, you know? Or is there an elective that they really enjoyed, you know? Could be a music class, could be, um, visual audio class, you know, what can we do? And, you know, once again, connecting with um, the counselor, kind of making appointments for the students, sending them, you know, your way so that you can share more information with them as well, too. But if they're completely confused at that point, I think, you know, just kind of having that stepping stone going into a um, community college, just trying out just different courses for the first year, you know, just kind of they, like they say, touching the waters and seeing what really rocks their boat from there onwards, you know. And if they do have the first two years to kind of go there for free for our students, why not try it out and see what really is meant for them to, or something that kind of really gets them going and saying, this is where I would like to pursue further studies into. That's awesome. I just think in California um, that our students really do have probably the best option of anywhere in the nation to try to um, get education after high school with our community college system and, and then the transfer into the CSU or the UC. And I know it's expensive, but it's way less expensive than anywhere else in the United States. And so I, I tell our students, you guys are so lucky to be here because um, from students from other states would be clamoring to get any type of free education and and so I just hope students will take advantage of those opportunities because the decisions that they're making now they don't realize it but are going to truly affect where they are when they're 30 years old. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, well is there any other last closing thoughts? No, I don't have anything else. Do you have anything else? I think we covered quite a bit and um, this will be posted on our website. So you're more than welcome to browse through them, check it out. We have many, many different, um, you know, universities and colleges you can look into, look into the career choices, look into the courses. Um, I think there is lots and lots of, an you know, answers that you could have uh, if you still have questions to anything. Uh, we really appreciate your time and have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching our presentation. A PowerPoint with additional information for freshmen and sophomores has been posted to the Career Center webpage. Students are highly encouraged to review the materials in that presentation. If you have any questions, please schedule a Google Meet with Mrs. Millar through the link that is also on the Career Center webpage. Thank you very much.